Welcome to Grimsby Minster this evening for Choral Evensong on this Feast of St James, joint patron of our parish. This evening's service includes items recorded for tonight, as well as content first broadcast live earlier in the pandemic. The office continues with verses from Psalm 94. Give him patience in time of 
I said, my foot hath slipped, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. In the multitude of the sorrows that I had in my heart, thy comforts have refreshed my soul. Wilt thou have anything to do with the stone of wickedness, which imagineth mischief as a law? Hey, gather them together against the soul of the righteous, and contend the innocent blood. strength of my confidence. He shall recompense them their wickedness and destroy them in their first lesson is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 26. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, came this word from the Lord, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Stand in the court of the Lord's house, and speak unto all cities of Judah, which come to worship in the Lord's house, all the words that I command thee to speak unto them. Diminish not a word. If so be, they will hearken, and turn every man from his evil way, that I may repent me of the evil which I purpose to do unto them, because of the evil of their doings. And thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, If ye will not hearken to me, to walk in my law, which I have set before you, to hearken to the words of my servants the prophets whom I sent unto you, both rising up early and sending them, but ye have not hearkened. Then will I make this house like Shiloh, and will make this city a curse to all the nations of the earth. So the priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. Now it came to pass, when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak unto all the people, that the priests and the prophets and all the people took him, saying, Thou shalt surely die. Why hast thou prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate without an inhabitant? And all the people were gathered against Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. When the princes of Judah heard these things, then they came up from the king's house unto the house of the Lord, and sat down in the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house. Then spake the priests and the prophets unto the princes and to all the people, saying, This man is worthy to die, for he hath prophesied against this city, as ye have heard with your ears. Then spake Jeremiah unto all the princes and to all the people, saying, the Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and against this city all the words that ye have heard. Therefore, now amend your ways and your doings, and obey the voice of the Lord your God. And the Lord will repent him of the evil that he hath pronounced against you. As for me, behold, I am in your hand. Do with me as seemeth good and meet unto you. But know ye for certain, that if ye put me to death, 
ye shall surely bring innocent blood upon yourselves and upon this city and upon the inhabitants thereof. For a truth of the Lord hath sent me unto you to speak all these words in your ears. Here endeth the first lesson. <laughs> The second lesson is taken from the Gospel according to St Mark, chapter 1. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the Gospel of the Kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the Kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the Gospel. Now as he walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straight away they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little further thence, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were also in the ship, mending their nets and straight away he called them
And they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. Here endeth the second lesson. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, buried, and buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. And sit upon the right hand of the God of the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
God, that as thine holy apostle Saint James, leaving his father and all that he had, without delay was obedient unto the calling of thy Son Jesus Christ, and followed him. So we, forsaking all worldly and carnal affections, may be ever more ready to follow thy holy commandments through Jesus Christ our Lord. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior. 
The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Today, in the Diocese of Lincoln cycle of prayer, we pray for the Scottish Episcopal Church. And across our diocese and parish today, we are praying for prisons, for those who work there, those imprisoned, for visitors, and for the families of prisoners. Within Grimsby, we pray for the Humberside Police Custody Centre at Birchin Way. Grant that your church, O God, here and in every place, may offer a living worship to you in your glory and a living witness to the world in its need through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. On this day, we are keeping the feast of a joint patron of our parish, St. James. He is the patron saint of pilgrims, labourers, rheumatism, several Latin American countries and Spain. We pray for all pilgrims, particularly for those following the Camino de Santiago in this holy year. We pray for those who visit our own Minster Church, for those who may enter as visitors and may leave as pilgrims. James, man of prayer, pray that we may listen and respond to God's call in our lives. James, holy apostle, pray that we may be disciples of Jesus in word and action. James, devoted friend of Jesus, pray that we may be strong in our devotion to one another. James, the fisherman, patron of labourers, pray for us in our labours and help those seeking employment. James, witness of the transfiguration of Jesus, pray that we may see the glory of God revealed in our lives. James, compassionate teacher, pray that we may serve one another in love. James, faithful to God's call, pray for us in our efforts to live our Christian faith. But James, comfort of the troubled, pray for those who are suffering, James, holy martyr, pray that we may be prepared to accept our own death. Blessed James, may your inner spirit of peace, good work, discipleship and prayer always be an inspiration to us. Holy Apostle, walk with us on our journey of faith. May your prayers obtain for us the wisdom to discern God's call and the strength to endure so that we may grow in holiness and rejoice in communion with all the saints. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. O glorious Apostle Saint James, who by reason of thy fervent and generous heart was chosen by Jesus to be witness of his glory on Mount Tabor and of his agony in Gethsemane, thou whose very name is a symbol of warfare and victory, obtain for us strength and consolation in the unending warfare of this life, that having constantly and generously followed Jesus, we may be victors in the strife and deserve to receive the victor's crown in heaven. Amen. And a prayer of Saint Benedict. O gracious and holy Father, give us wisdom to perceive you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Church's ministry and mission has never been more needed. Meeting online or in church for prayer services and fellowship, loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable and caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity and we are so grateful for all the gifts we receive. This generosity is a hallmark of a lived out faith and a testament to it. If you are able to give to us now, Here's how you can help. <laughs> 